Welcome to BizTech Forward, your go-to podcast for cutting-edge insights at the intersection of business and technology. Join us as we explore the trends, innovations, and strategies shaping the future of the digital world. Let's move forward together. Welcome back to BizTech Forward, a podcast where we chat about technology and business with some of the brightest minds at Daytart. I'm Annie from Daytart's media relations team, and I'm here to talk with these brightest minds, to speak their brain, so to speak. Today, we are taking off into the world of aviation, aviation and technology, that is. Joining us is Tim McMullen, Head of Business Development for Aviation and Travel Technology at Daytart. Hi, Tim. So good to have you here. Hi, Annie. It's, uh, it's great to be here today. Tim brings over 25 years of experience in providing software and services to airlines worldwide, from startups to global carriers. Also, Tim recently attended several airline tech events, so he's here to give us the scoop on current trends and what's next for aviation technology. Again, Tim, welcome to the show. So happy you're here. Thank you so much. We'll be briefly covering the past present and future of aviation technology in this episode. Plus, Tim might share an unpopular opinion or two at the end, so stay tuned. Uh, But let's start with the past. Tim, let's look back a little bit. With all your experience, you must have seen aviation technology evolve quite a bit. So how was it back in the day, say, five to ten years ago? Yeah, that's that's a great question. You know, as as I think about that, right, I might even go back a little bit earlier uh, one of my first jobs in aviation technology was a software product manager. And back then, I actually would go out to customer sti- sites, um, do some training. But but in order to get them the updated software, we would literally put it on three and a half inch floppy drives, put it in a FedEx envelope and mail it out to them. Uh, when I would go on site and do training, I would literally have to take the the disks, the installed disks, and go to every computer that was in the training room and install it because this application wasn't on the network. It had to be locally installed. Some of the files could be shared, you know, on on a network, but but back then, right, they were local installs, and it to me, it's a bit insane to sort of think about how how we did that back then. Um, I mean, even. Even at that point in in my career, I remember having conversations with some customers, and the conversation was not, you know, which program it's best is best. It was more, I think, doing it manually the way I've always been doing it might be faster than using your software program. And and you know, when you think about that kind of conversation today, I think it's it's uh, almost unimaginable, right? Because technology is part of our lives. Um, there was even one one time. This is a true story. I was talking to a customer. And kind of as a joke, we made a little side bet. And he said, Tim, I don't need to use your software. I can, I can build my flight schedule faster. And I said, there's, there's no way. Of course you can't. <laughs> and so we made a little side bet for fun. And, and, but the side bet had big stakes. It was, hey, if I beat you, if I build my, your flight schedule faster in my software, you have to use my software. And vice versa, if, if he were to build this schedule faster manually, right, then I would go away, right? Um, I was pretty confident. Um, so we, 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 it was a little bit of a fun challenge, like I said. So we did that. Um, but guess who won? I bet it was you, Tim. It was me. Yeah, software prevailed. <laughs> so <laughs> that, was a, that was a fun little story, a fun time. What happened to that customer, I wonder? Did they still use the software, hopefully? They, they started using it. And I think it was, a bit of, it was a bit of a different transition, right? Because you're changing the way you're doing business, but they still use it today. So it was a, I would say it was a success story. Yeah, and it's a fun success story also. Um, right. Of course, Tim, it would be very obvious to say that technology moved from being somewhere, you know, on the background to being, you know, the hero of the show, not just in airline business, but overall. But still, would you share maybe some memorable recent milestones in the yeah, area? I, sure. Even even fast forwarding a little bit, fast forwarding a little bit from that, one of the things that we did um, same company is that we we decided to reimagine, rebuild our flight scheduling suite of products. Uh, new interface, new user interface, new workflow. Uh, we were integrating disparate systems, um, new technology stack, right? So we we re- reimagined the whole thing, which was re- a really fun project. But of course, there were challenges along the way. We learned some things along the way. Uh, we did some customer installs. Some of the first ones, as you could imagine, right? They, there are a few challenges. 
I didn't even know it at the time, but we installed an MVP. I didn't even know what an MVP was, but the minimum viable product is what we installed. And we kept innovating and improving that. Um, and it got to be a, a very successful um, project overall. Um, but I, yeah, I spent a lot of time going to different airlines around the world and doing installs and training them. And um, I really learned a lot in that process about soft, the software development life cycle and you know, how to work with customers, how to work with uh, development teams. And it, it really gave me an appreciation of, of how software works and how you build it and how you kind of make it come alive. Um, still today, I have a lot of both coworkers, uh, friends that were customers and coworkers that, that, that I still talk to today. So it was definitely a, a very great time, I guess, in my career innovating and working, you know, working in software. Right. And that's a nice little bridge to today, actually, because I'm very curious to hear what's happening right now so that we don't spend ages in the past. I want to know what's going on right now. So also, I do know that you went to loads of aviation and technology events, like literally last month. So I think you went to World Aviation Festival to Travel Experience and Air, Future Travel Experience Conference and other events. I want to hear the gossip kind of. <laughs> so what's the, what's, what was everybody talking about? What stood out to you? Yeah, there were some really interesting things at, at these conferences. Um, and there's even another one I'm attending next week. Um, but uh, there, you know, when we think about technology or, excuse me, innovation, innovation comes in different forms. So at Future Travel Experience, we had the opportunity to visit uh, uh, the Jet Zero plant. So Jet Zero, if you're not familiar with them, they're building a brand new aircraft. It's a blended wing aircraft, and it's said to reduce fuel, uh, fuel efficiency by 50%. Uh, because of the design of it, the customer experience will completely change because the interior layout is different than any any plane you've seen today. So you could you could certainly go to their website and kind of look at that. But it's that is a big innovation because it's a completely different type of airplane. Uh, first flight is supposed to launch in a couple of years with um, I think with the U.S. Air Force as a tanker. Um, another innovation is connectivity. So Starlink is is seems like it's becoming a a standard in a way for for certain airlines. Qatar just recently made an announcement there, that they're going to be debuting Starlink on their flights. Uh, JSX Airlines is an airline based in Dallas, Texas, and they they actually have Starlink in their passenger terminals on their aircraft. and And so you could imagine when you enter their building, you can you're automatic if you've been there before, right? You're automatically connected to Starlink. While you're in their building, you stay connected while you board the aircraft, while you fly, while when you arrive. So really, from end to end, you're connected, right? So that's that's definitely a pretty a pretty neat innovation. Um, other innovations are uh, Envoy, which is a regional carrier for American Airlines. They're implementing autonomous wheelchairs, so to be able to bring passengers to their gate, they don't have to wait for a person to push the wheelchair, and you know it's it's more efficient, right? So that's that's launching as well. Um, so just a lot of different um, different technologies that are out there. Biometrics and like, digital identity is a big one as well, because as we go through airports, uh, I remember coming to an immigration uh, line and sometimes waiting, you know, two or three hours while they cleared people manually one by one. And that, you know, when you're on a, you know, a large wide body aircraft, there could be a, a, a few hundred people there. So so nowadays, you you go through in some t- sometimes minutes, right? Uh, it's it's pretty remarkable how that has changed. I think. Oh, that's all really great. I want to spend a little bit more time here. Uh, that is in technology. Uh, I assume we're gonna have to talk about AI quite a bit right now. But uh, was there any standout tech innovation talk that you heard that you could share with us? Yeah, I think you're right. AI is, I, I don't think I have a conversation today with the CIO or or even a business leader at an airline without AI kind of coming up, right? So, you know, chatbots seemed when, when generative AI was sort of first and chat GPT first sort of launched on the market recently, right? It was a, it was a big change and a lot of airlines and companies, right, ran to that um, as a way to solve, you know, initially chatbots as a, as a customer service tool, right? So, some airlines have done that quite well. Um, I think there has been there were probably hiccups along the way. So 
So a lot of airlines or com and companies, again, have adopted probably a crawl, walk, run strategy. Some are crawling, some are walking, some are, some are running with that. Um, so it, it just depends on sort of their maturity level, but, but, uh, the data underlying your, your, uh, your chat bot certainly, certainly matters. And those are a lot of discussions we have today. Um, some other AI related ones, this is an interesting one, um, uh, back in December of 2022, Southwest airlines was impacted by a winter storm called winter storm Elliott. Um, in the United States, a lot of airlines sort of suffered from that Southwest seemed to be hit a bit probably harder than the others for, for various reasons. But they, they ended up creating using AI and they built a tool they call LIAD, the Leading Indicator Alert Tool. And it really looks at a lot of data, uh, a lot of past performance of flights and pro, to proactively address issues in the operation. And they've, they've launched that and it, it, uh, they seem to be getting uh, good uh, good results and good uh, improvements in their operation from that. Um, another airline that you know that I heard at one of these shows was uh, Air Canada, and so they seem to be, I would say, all in on AI. Right? They've really adopted it, and and they didn't do it overnight. It, they they started with a couple different areas: revenue management and cargo work were two areas where they really started their process. But they did recently hire, in September of 2024, a chief digital officer to really manage. Uh, manage their data, their AI, and this, this program. They have looked at governance. They've looked at ethics around it, right? So they've really taken a careful look at that. But they are, uh, like I said, I, I feel they're all in. and or Not I feel. They, they've really said they're kind of all in on AI and using it in a lot of different areas of the company um, to really improve customer experience, improve operations, they they use the data work to work for uh, work with airports. So when you think of the airline environment, right? There's no airline does it alone, and we work with airlines work with a lot of uh, providers and vendors and what have you. And and so one of the ways to help improve operations is to share data with with providers in real time. And AI, the way they've designed their AI model, in, enables that. So it's pretty exciting to to watch. Right. So it sounds like it's, um, a lot of it is about making operations smoother and more reliable for the customer. And I myself, like, what do I know about airline and technology? I think of myself just as a customer. All I think about is like, uh, is my bag going to fit in under the seat in front of me? Like, that's my level, you know? But still, since I'm a customer, I wonder, uh, what trends are you seeing around customer-facing tech? Yeah, that's that's a great point, right? Operations is certainly a big area, but yeah, a lot of passengers. I'm, I'm sure they're they're not in the airline industry like like I am, and and probably a lot of people that I talk to in my, I'll say within my circle. But but uh, airlines are doing a lot of kind of interesting things with AI. So Alaska Airlines uh, recently unveiled um, kind of an air travel agent. So the idea is that you'd be able to speak to a tool they've built, uh, and AI is the underpinning of that. And you would say things like. I'd like to go to a city that's famous for street food, or maybe I want to go to a city that has great hiking. And then in the background, they would look at the different flight options and the cities that they fly to that match that criteria and, and give you an answer, right? So it's a, it's a pretty, pretty exciting way to, instead of, I'll say the old days, right? You would just go to a website and put in your departure city and arrival city, and you had to do kind of the legwork yourself to figure out your trip plan in some cases, right? So and there's other, there are other ways to do that today that airlines are doing. I wouldn't be fair to say that, that the only thing you can do is, is book your travel. You can do a lot more on airline websites. But what, Air, what Alaska has done is really taken it to another step with AI to, to invest in kind of a conversational way to make a booking. Right. Tim, I struggle with two th thoughts in my head at the same time. So one of them is, oh, my God, that's so cool. And another one is, is it all making us lazier? <laughs> what do you think? Well, is it lazy or are we more, being more efficient? Because now we've saved some time and now we can, we can go on and do other things that, that we, we uh, get pleasure from. Maybe if we like hiking, right? Maybe I want to book a hiking trip, but I, maybe I hike regularly at home. So now I have some time to go do that. So, yeah. So I think uh, I look at the efficiency side of it and the improvements. I'm, I'm maybe eternally optimistic, but I, I try to look at the positive side of whatever gets implemented. Oh, well, yeah. There you go. Anything else customer specific that stood out to you, maybe? 
Yeah, there was an interesting, there's an interesting contest, I'll say that they have the World Aviation Festival and they have, it's called Battle of the Airline Apps and they've had it for a few years. Um, and they look at different things like customer experience, passenger information, you know, disruptions. Really, as you said, right, you as a traveler, as a passenger, you may not be aware of a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. When disruptions happen, that's that's a challenge sometimes for airlines. And you just, you as a passenger, right, you want to know just when am I going to get there? Yeah, my flight's delayed or I, I've gotten canceled and I need to be rebooked on another flight. And you just want to know some basic information. You don't really care probably necessarily how it's done. Um, but some of these airline apps are really kind of changing changing that because they're providing more information. So this year, the three finalists were Air India, Emirates, and Lufthansa. Um, and I, I watched the battle and they were all very interesting and all had a, kind of a different perspective and a different... Um, you know, different pitch, we'll say, right? But the judges, they have a judge, uh, a pretty pretty good judging panel where they don't just watch the pitch. They actually spend some time on the app kind of before the contest and understand what's there and ask really intelligent questions. Um, at the end of it, Lufthansa this year came out as the winner. So, uh, you know, congratulations to them, right? So that was, it was, again, fun to watch. Oh, that's a really cool example. So global. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right? It's... um World Aviation Fest is a great, you know, it's a great event, right, to to network and see what's going on with trends just really around the world. Thank you for sharing that with us. I didn't even go, but now I feel like I know a lot. Um, now, you know, Tim, I really want you to look into your crystal ball. If you have one, if you don't, just imagine that you do. Uh, so where do you think aviation technology is going. I want to ask in the next five years, but like at least next year. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I do wish I had a crystal ball. Unfortunately, I don't. Um, but what I what I can share is, is uh, let's talk about maybe the airline industry as a whole. So there are there are different reports out there that talk about how, how much the airline industry will grow. So from uh, one of the organizations is IATA, the International Air Transport Association, they estimate that passenger traffic uh, around the world, globally, right, will grow from 4 billion passengers in 2024 to 8 billion in 2040. So in, in only 16 years, it will double, but double massively, right? Adding 4 billion more trips and people around the world. Um, and it's interesting because it's, it will have a different impact on different markets uh, the United States is going to more than double. I think India is projected to grow times five. China will double. So there's different, certainly different pockets where uh, where traffic will grow, and of course that will impact different airlines differently. Um, but but to answer your question and kind of think about well, what does that mean for technology, um, maybe I'll use a a bit of a cliche or a saying, right? Which is the old saying is when is the best time to plant a tree. And the answer is yesterday. When is the second time, best time to plant a tree? That's today. So I think about technology like that, right? When we, when we, if we go back to what I was talking about earlier in sort of a crawl, walk, run strategy, right? I think, I think every, every airline, every company, right, is better served if they start working through, um, you know, some experimentation and trying to, trying to, to uh, test different things. But as the, the earlier you start, right, you're going to learn along the way and you're going to experiment, and but that will enable you to come up with new ideas to be able to grow. I mean, again, think about the Alaska AI uh, model, right? They didn't probably didn't come up with that overnight. The battle of the airline apps, right? They they probably have you know great teams, customer facing teams, operation teams, digital teams that all pitch in and talk about what is possible, right? So, so I think really, I, I would say. While I don't know how to predict the future, I think we all have to kind of iterate and work through, you know, different ideas and really some good ideas uh, that I guess none of us have a crystal ball for will will start appearing in the next over the next several years. Right. And do you think also sustainability is going to be in focus for the next year, even more so than it is now? Yeah. Uh, good question um sustainability is is part of the conversation at all of these events all these worldwide events because 
um, for a couple of reasons. One of them is one of them is that IATA does have a mandate for airlines to be carbon neutral by 2040. So 2040 again, it's not that far away. And if you think of the airline fleet and how many airplanes are out there and what they have to do to become carbon neutral, right? That's a it's a lot of work to be done. Um, but airlines are working towards that. Um, not to kind of give too many examples on Alaska Airlines, but they this is recent, so I'll I'll do that. Um, but Last uh, In 2023, Alaska Airlines tested a program for sustainable aviation fuel uh, where they uh, supported over 500,000 gallons of SAF. Um, I think they put that on pause for a little bit, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but then just in November of 2024, they relaunched the program. And so passengers today can buy SAF credits online and they earn earn elite qualifying miles, which is a nice way to say kind of your frequent flyer miles. So it's a way for a passenger to participate in, you know, in kind of the, the climate problem, you know, that's, that's out there. Right. And, and, and work towards that in a, in a meaningful way. So, so right. that's, that's an example of how SAF and, um, you know, the, the climate is, is affecting how, how airlines are affecting the climate and how we can work together with that. Tim, and you personally, um, is there anything specific that you're following right now in the news? Or is there maybe some specific app that you are excited to try out in the nearest future? Something that is on the horizon that you, Tim, are following? You know, I, I don't know if there's one specific app. Um, when I travel, I my wife is probably tired of traveling with me because I look at I look at all these different apps as I'm traveling, right? TSA has an app. Um, the airport that I normally fly out of has an app. Uh, my airline has an app. My hotel, everybody has an app. And I look at all of these. But then I also, when I walk into an airport, um, my mind sort of changes. And I look at, I, I literally look at everything around me, how passengers are flowing through the airport. I I look at a system when they're checking their bags and I wonder what system they, they're using. Oftentimes I probably know, um, but I look at literally everything around it. When I walk to the gate or when I walk through, through security, I think about, you know, the machine that's, that's, you know, that's taking my picture. When I get towards the gate, I look at all of the ground support equipment, right? So my brain doesn't really turn off. In fact, it, it and maybe it goes on hyperspeed when I'm, when I'm walking through an airport, right? So um, it's, it's, uh, like I said, I, I think it's a lot of fun. Maybe, like, as I said, maybe my wife is a little tired of that, but it's, it's, to me, it's pretty interesting. Cause I think the whole transportation system is, uh, is very exciting because there's so many dynamics of it that are operational, that are technology related. So yeah, I guess I don't really have an app that I look at, but I, I look at a lot of apps and I, I definitely observe the end to end operation of really everything that's happening. Um, well, Tim, that, that's great. That is one busy mind that you have there. It's like all the apps are already in your brain. So this is what is on your horizon. Basically, everything is on your right. horizon. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, Tim, my favorite part. I love to ask that question. Do you have an unpopular opinion on the topic of aviation and technology? Something that you think airlines are missing or basically what is like unpopular to say or to even think? Yeah, I think um, that, that's a good question, right? It, Airlines, or, or in, you know, again, maybe it's companies in general. I, I spent my really my entire career in airlines. That's what I know best. But um, you know, it's always hard when you go talk to, let's say, a CIO. You know, they have a budget, they have stakeholders that they need to answer to, and they want things to go right. Um, but as we're exploring sort of new horizons of technology, new ideas, AI is the, a, a great example of that, right? I think I, I'm not sure if this is unpopular, but it's certainly something I think about, which is you know, we're, we may not get it right all the time, you know, all of us together, right? Not just, you know, a technology company or a software provider or an airline operator. Um, there's a lot of things, It's again, because it's a very dynamic industry. Um, so maybe the unpopular p opinion or viewpoint would be, you know, sometimes you have to experiment and you're not going to get it right. You're going to make some mistakes. It does cost a little bit of money, right? Because we're, we're spending time and effort, you know, in this ecosystem doing this. Um, but I think airlines are ser better served if they experiment, try some new things. Um, lots of some airlines are are standing up, you know, uh, labs or think tanks 
Um, some companies have hackathons to sort of try try new ideas, right? Try and fail, fail fast, right? Um, but some of those failures are are good lessons learned in the next round, right? So I think it's it's helpful to uh, just to try different scenarios. Um, you know, I, I don't think an end user can always imagine, let's say, what an end product might look like until you work through that a little bit. You learn along the way and you get different feedback in, in these different iteration cycles. And I think it's helpful to uh, to experiment and kind of okay to fail. You don't want to fail all the time, of course, right? But you, you want to, ultimately, you want to move ahead, but you can lo- use that information as a, I guess, as a lesson learned. That's always a good reminder. Just pick yourself up and go. Um, Tim, thank you so much. This has been really interesting. I really enjoyed chatting with you today. Thank you for taking us on this journey for the world of aviation. Um, it's really exciting times, huh? Yeah, it, it was my pleasure. This was great. And, um, you know, I think for me, it's, it's what's interesting is what's in the skies ahead, right? Uh, as, as airlines grow, I look forward to different, uh, different innovations that are gonna, going to come. Yeah, let's find out. And thank you so much to our listeners for tuning in to this Tech Forward. If you enjoyed this episode, do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And as always, any thoughts, questions, insights of your own, do reach out to us at thistechforward at datart.com. That's all for now. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to BizTech Forward. Be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast to stay updated on the latest in business and technology. Join us next time for more insights and forward-thinking discussions. Presented by DataArt.